Hey guys, so it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I've just gotten out of bed and had a shower. But no, I haven't had a, a lazy lie in or anything like that for all it is uh, Sunday, so I should be entitled to one. I was at the hospital last night with one of the children, um, Joshua. He went into a series of uh, very violent seizures and it just wouldn't stop. So we took him and it took some time and Fritzi's not here at the moment. She flew to Hamburg, her father sent her a flight so she can go and see her family and make preparations for our wedding, like fitting a wedding dress and stuff like this. So, so I was alone last night and that left me thinking a lot. And I was thinking about you guys actually, among other things, so I wanted to discuss that now. I... get the feeling that I'm very lucky in as I get to see firsthand how I'm helping. That is a massive blessing in my life, in anybody's life. If you firsthand every day see the difference, however small, however big you're making in a person's life, that is a huge benefit and very motivational to allow you to keep going and to remind you why you're doing what you're doing. But last night whilst I was driving home, I began to imagine all of the persons who have donated over the years or recently and are in my mind. And I was thinking some of these people will just be waking up now and making their breakfast completely oblivious to the fact that because in their heart they decided to reach out and share with what we're doing for these children here, I was able to have fuel in my car, to have a car, and to be able to drive to the hospital with money for the bills to make sure that Joshua could get the treatment to put a stop to his seizures. You see, I'm under no illusion that if Joshua was out in his home, where his, pair, his, his mum is with him here, they were living in a very bad condition in mud and stick house out in the middle of nowhere in the bush. Without intervention, he would have seizured possibly until death or until irreparable brain damage last night. And this place only exists to protect these children, but only exists because of you guys. Now, I'm driving home and I'm imagining you all sleeping or waking up and making your breakfast or going about your daily routine and you have no idea what you've just done. You have no idea that because of your heart saying, I'm going to share because it's the right thing to do, that while you were completely oblivious, walking around innocently going about your day, I was racing to hospital with a, with a child who is seizuring uh, in a very severe way to get treatment. But all the while I'm doing that, I'm using the love that you shared. Of course, it comes in the forms of resources and money and donations and fundraising and time. But ultimately, it stems from the same organic place of the love of you guys. And I hope I can keep you connected to what you do here. Because at every given moment, I can't share what is happening. But at every given moment, when you share with us, you're the one healing them. I'm just the tool, I'm just the bridge for God. That's ultimately what he put me here for, to be a bridge. I'm not doing anything as such. I'm sure I'm driving the car at the hospital, sure I'm managing this place and I'm making the videos and I'm trying to get everything done behind the scenes, the, the bank accounts and the registration and the, the websites and the fundraising ideas and stuff like this, but those are mostly gifted to me anyway in meditation, so they're God. Not, not so much myself, all creativity, I believe, is from God anywhere. So it's not really me who's creating those ideas. But I'm just following my heart. And in following my heart, I believe I'm following orders. And I guess you guys might be said to be doing the same, but you don't see it. I go out there right now and I see 29 children. I see them progressing. I see which ones have learned to take their first step. I see which ones have learned to smile, which ones have learned to say a word. You don't see it. You don't see it. And, and, and I see that child now who is 
very likely still alive because I had resources to drive him to the hospital and you don't see it. And I hope I can get enough on camera to make sure that you do see it. Even if my videos are not polished and they're not beautiful and I've tried that route of making sure the videos are all nice with music and vlogging. And I don't have time for that, guys. <laughs> I just don't. But even if my videos are not polished and they're not looking good, I hope I can just put stuff out there even if it's just me speaking, because I'm also trying to protect the privacy of the children. Some of the children are not camera shy, but some of them can't tell me if they don't want to be on film. And I, I have to try and think of that for all I'm also trying to be their voice. So if I can get away with just using my own voice and uh, speaking about the children in the odd video of them, then that's what I'll do to protect their privacy. They shouldn't be a daily uh, means for people to log in and see what they're doing, you know. But, when they can't give permission for me to do that, I mean. So I'll, I'll do my best to make sure that they're not on film as much as possible, unless they ask to be. But the special needs kids can't, so. Ah. But ultimately it was just to say that, that while you're obliviously going about your day, be it sleeping, waking up, making your breakfast, getting your children ready for school, doing your office work, or whatever you might be doing out there, going for your exercise in the gym, I'm here seeing what you've done and I just want to relay that, that those of you who share with us, last night I wouldn't be driving to the hospital, I wouldn't be able to, Joshua would probably, I think he would probably, I hate to say it, probably be dead if he weren't here. So without him being here because of you guys, without me being able to go there, and this is all the everyday, amazing things are happening, beautiful things. But it all stems from that moment all over the world where people have sat and something's touched them, something's moved them, be it the events here, be it God, whatever you want to call it, and they've clicked a button and said, I'm going to share with those children. And I'm, like I say, I see it every day and it motivates me. It's good for me to have that motivation. I wake up, I see the kids, I'm tired. I say, right, no, this is why I have to do what I need to do. But for those of you who reach out and share and then go about doing your daily business, you, you don't get to see that, yet you still manage to remember to keep on sharing. And I admire that greatly about you all. Because before I came here, I was not such a man. I didn't really reach out and, and share as much as I could have. In the whole of my younger life, I, I did give to charities intermittently if I saw something happening um, but only small amounts and the only thing I ever committed to was I sponsored a child in, in Heidi but that was only in my recent years before coming here when I was changing inside so for those of you who, who do it as a natural way of being you share with those in need just as I speak and know it should be and say it should be I have great admiration for you for going about your daily lives and still being able to remember and to connect with people who are not in your daily life but still be motivated to surrender some of your material comforts to provide for them. So, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. I've got some other videos to make but yeah, I might make another one now. Okay. Thank you. That's what I was thinking while I was driving. While well, you're sleeping in your bed, or going about your daily work, oblivious to the idea that you're saving a child's life here. It's pretty amazing, just me. God bless. Bye. I heard of a man and a seed that's been so.